Hello. Good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Thursday the 27th of April. Common Worship Daily Prayer Easter Season. You'll find the words in the eponymously titled book towards the beginning after prayer during the day. Downloadable as apps for Apple or Android devices and online at the church's website. And Arima's Daily Prayer, no less. Commemorating Christine Rossetti. Um, not much adjustment to standard running order for the Easter season morning prayer, but if you'd like to look her up, um, good practice, I guess. 27th of April, halfway through the book, Saints, Days and Festivals. Any adjustments we've made automatically, if you're following electronically. You're welcome to join me in the building. Uh, the codes for Zoom, if you want to join by that means, via that means, are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook, and the Dominic Doble YouTube channel will hold the audio in an hour or so's time once I've recorded it and uploaded it. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths will proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he dies to, once for, to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> the night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We turn to the Psalter, which, if you are following the book, is at the back. We scroll on electronically. We're looking for Psalm 136 this morning, the appointed Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures for ever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for his mercy endures for ever. Who alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures for ever. Who by wisdom made the heavens, heavens, for his mercy endures for ever. Who laid out the earth upon the waters, for his mercy endures for ever. Who made the great lights, for his mercy endures for ever. The sun to rule the day, for his mercy endures for ever. The moon and the stars to govern the night, for his mercy endures for ever. Who smote the firstborn of Egypt, for his mercy endures for ever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endures for ever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, for his mercy endures for ever. Who divided the Red Sea in two, for his mercy endures for ever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures for ever. But Pharaoh and his host he overthrew in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures for ever. Who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures for ever. Who smote great kings, for his mercy endures for ever. And slew mighty kings, 
for his mercy endures for ever. Zion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures for ever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endures for ever. And gave away their land for a heritage, for his mercy endures for ever. A heritage for Israel, his servant, for his mercy endures for ever. He remembered us when we were in trouble, for his mercy endures for ever. And delivered us from our enemies, for his mercy endures for ever. And delivered us from our, sorry, who gives food to all creatures, for his mercy endures for ever. Uh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. <coughs> Strong past our first reading for following electronically, turning back in the books to morning prayer during Easter season to find the song of Moses and Miriam. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise. The God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. Out of the blast of your nostrils the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. This from Kindle edition of Celebrating a Saint. Christina Rossetti was born in 1830 and was associated with the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, of which her older brother Dante was a prominent member. Her elder sister became an Anglican religious Christine's own fame rests upon the poetry, which dealt mainly with religious subjects, but also the sounds of unrequited or disappointed love. Her first recorded verses addressed to her mother on the latter's birthday were written on the 17th of April, 1842. She was the author of The Carol in the Bleak Midwinter. She died on the 29th of December, 1894. Reading of the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 7, beginning at first verse. You'll find Deuteronomy at the beginning of the Hebrew Scriptures, after Genesis, Exodus, etc. Five books in Deuteronomy. Large number, seven at the head of the, paragra head of the paragraph is the chapter number, and the small numbers in the text, 1 to 11, the other verses. Deuteronomy 7, from 1. When the Lord your God brings you into the land that you are about to enter and occupy and clears away many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations mightier and more numerous than you, and when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you defeat them, then you must utterly destroy them, make no covenant with them, show them no mercy, do not intermarry with them, giving your daughters to their sons or taking their daughters for your sons, for that would turn away your children from following me to serve other gods. Then the anger of the Lord would be kindled against you and he would break and he would destroy you quickly. But this is how you must deal with them, break down their altars, smash their pillars, hew down their sacred poles, and burn their idols with fire. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on earth to be his people, his treasured possession. It was not because you were more numerous than any other peoples that the Lord set his heart upon you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. It was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath that he swore to your ancestors that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who maintains covenant loyalty with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and who repays in their own person those who reject him. He does not delay, but repays in their own person those who reject him. Therefore observe diligently the commandment, the statutes, and the ordinances that I am commanding you today. <coughs> So a sort of a old-fashioned conventional opening paragraph, which is a bit challenging, or a lot challenging, to our ears perhaps, and then uh, quite a radical paragraph following. The first, basically, um, show no mercy, how chilling that is, because you are right. And um, I think of IS, 
but there are many other peoples, not least sadly perhaps those um, ungracious, ungod-fearing or non-god-fearing um, people who live in the Holy Land today who oppress and destroy and uh, remove other peoples and their cultures and their livelihoods because of this text that the land is theirs promised to both sons of Abraham one before circumcision and one after so may God be merciful um, and it's a challenge how do we relate to that that was written to destroy the people their worship their culture as they go in all of them even though they were stronger and mightier and didn't necessarily do anything wrong apart from worship false gods have a different belief system in other words but there they are being sent in to do that whether they actually have achieved that or not is a mass moot point for historians to consider or uh, archaeologists but uh, this was written as the people coming out of or, uh, most modern scholars would say written when it was when people coming out of uh, exile um, reminding them of their coming out of the stories of them coming out of slavery so they're coming out of Babylon, were coming out of Egypt, and this is put into Moses' mouth as sort of a text, as a story on which the contemporary teachers coming out of exile could, by which the contemporary teachers coming out of exile could keep God's people to account. And uh, it puts the fear of God into them. This is your job. You've got to annihilate everything that is in your path because that is the holy fire of God. I guess we might interpret it metaphorically to avoid the complexities of the issues by saying, well, actually, if we're going into new territory, we need to get rid of all that is wrong there, because God's rule needs to be established, and God's rule is one of righteousness, joy, hope, and peace. But it sits ill with this notion of destruction. However, the second paragraph is uh, perhaps easier to swallow, for those of us that are more delicately oriented. <coughs> the idea in the second paragraph, I'd say, is quite radical, because... Um, the writer suggests that God loves God's people, and uh, that's great. And God has a relationship with God's people as a parent would, if you like, that reacts to the individual that has done wrong. So it's not like the whole class gets to stay in late because somebody um, broke wind. Um, and then they all laughed about it. The individual who committed the misdemeanor and bears the consequences, makes amends, apologises, and then is restored and all is well. And this would have been written at a time where there might have been a presumption <clears throat> that we're all so community-oriented, because that individualism that we comes to our mind first of all and think of ourselves today is a relatively modern invention. They would have thought their community bore the brunt, they were part of a community, whatever the community leaders did was part of what they suffered, and rightly so, I guess. So this was quite a radical idea that we are responsible for our own actions and our own salvation before God. But no, that God loves us in our community. And let us remember that today, as we act, think, do, that we are um, temples of the Spirit and that the consequences of our actions don't just affect those amongst whom we live, but also ourselves and our own relationship with God. To Ephesians 2 from 11, then our second Bible reading, scroll on to it for following electronically in the Holy Bible. <clears throat> We're now about halfway through the Second Covenant amongst the letters to name small congregations, A-E-I-O-U, Galatians, Ephesians. <clears throat> so I turn to the back and move towards the beginning. You should come across it, otherwise use an index. We're looking for the large number 2, this time chapter 2, and small numbers of the text. We're starting at verse 11, Ephesians 2 from 11. So then remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace in his flesh. He has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, <clears throat> thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who are far off, peace to those who are near, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, 
built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole stru structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so Paul writes into a congregation made up mostly of people who weren't church or weren't Jewish, weren't temple. <coughs> An equivalent today might be a f Facebook post to <coughs> a, um, what Anglicans would call a fresh expression or a house church, perhaps one that meets at work or at uh, the rugby club. And um, various people might have various rules that decide that it is or isn't church. <coughs> and uh, this would be like their leader, as I say, Facebook post or a WhatsApp comment saying that actually you are as much church as any other group of Christians who meet together, pray, serve and uh, learn as in community. And here he is writing to mainly Gentile, non-Jewish background people who um, <clears throat> are called in the diaspora or in the countries around Jerusalem, circumcision or uncircumcision, because that was the defining feature. The people were called Gentiles around Jerusalem because they were either Jewish or Gentile, but further afield they were called the circumcision people of the circumcision because it was such a defining identifying um, cut or feature <coughs> of them or at least of their men <coughs> and so he explains that they were separated but they've been accepted through the blood of the Jew Jesus although he calls him Christ rather than Messiah here because the majority audience would use the word Christ rather than Messiah. It basically means the same thing. The chosen, the anointed, the appointed. And uh, we've got twice the lines I've just noticed. You who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You who were far off have been brought and given peace to those who were near. So that phrase a couple of times, I guess there are other parallels too, if we had it perhaps in the Greek. So those who are near are Jews, those who are far off are Gentiles, again a different metaphor. And so we might feel we are far off, strangers and aliens, nothing to do with church. It's not common for people to say, oh I'm not church, and they're the ones that keep the place clean, tidy, do the flowers. Most regular at uh, Christmas and Easter, let's say, but don't have anything to do with it. I'm not a fan of, just had some the other day, I'm not a fan of uh, organised religion, especially not the Church of England, but they keep our towers full of bell ringers, or at least as full as they're able in this corner of the world, um, summoning people to what it is they claim they don't believe in. And I'm not trying to uh, annex people and uh, make them what they say they're not, but it's quite interesting that sometimes the most vociferous antis are in fact those who care most. Uh, not entirely true, but I think you perhaps know what I mean. It's because they know what the church should be, perhaps, that they are, don't want to associate with it, whereas others, like me, uh, are there in the midst of the thick of it anyway, whether we like it or not, and uh, hold all that dissension, disagreement, and the challenge like that ethnic cleansing stuff that I wrote earlier on. Uh, and here we are. But we're all in it together. One thing I don't necessarily agree with, um, Jesus said that he didn't come to abolish the law, but uh, Paul writes here that the law has been abolished. So you pay your money, you uh, make your choice. But uh, I think what Paul is trying to explain here is that those structures are no longer exclusive, they are inclusive. So in that sense, I guess, the law, which like circumcision, or is circumcision, um, can divide and can also be interpreted if we recognise that it's written by God of love and inclusion to be inclusive. So instead of the commandments, thou shalt not kill, being a pointy finger, it's more of a blessing. You will be so full of love and hope and joy and security that you will not feel anger or hatred and therefore not be destructive in your attitude towards yourself or other people. So to the responsory back in... Um, morning prayer during Easter season. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? The Song of Zechariah. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors 
and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. <clears throat> Make a lover keeper, one in three, three in one. We come to you at the beginning of this day, and uh, we recognise our calling to uh, seek to see your rule established and to see all that opposes it destroyed. And we thank you that as part of that, our exclusion of others must be put to death, that they may have life. We thank you for bringing us who were far off near by your voice, and we pray that by your spirit you inspire and enable us do the same for those amongst whom we live today and to recognise the nearest nearness of many who would uh, deny it and work with you in your mission and ministry to establish your just rule. Prayers for Armenia, Azerbaijan and Georgia These uh, in these days from the World Council of Churches. We thank for positive developments in these countries that these countries have undergone since the end of the Soviet era, and we pray for the healing of past wrongs and distorted memories of what has occurred. From, uh, we've still got uh, World Earth Day from Christian Acts Research Education. So I'm not uh, quite sure what to pray into in that regard, say perhaps let's pray for our um, central government and especially the current administration <coughs> that uh, both they and the opposition will do what they see as being right rather than vote winning and uh, that those who are of the Conservative, part, Conservative Party representatives locally will be able to, a bit like our reading of the first reading today makes sense locally of what people are saying nationally, even if those strident views that are expressed centrally aren't necessarily helpful or their own locally. And uh, we pray for the establishment of, yes, your just and gentle rule in our land. Green Christian. Uh, see if I can find there. Prayer diary. <coughs> Excuse me. A, a Delhi based engineer has designed replacement polystyrene packaging out of rice stubble. He turns 250 metric tons, 250 metric tons of stubble into packaging, paying 30. I don't know whether that's a year. <coughs> I don't know whether the sums make any sense, but he pays $30 an acre, apparently, for waste material. So we thank God for that. Good news network, um, always good value. From Green Christian, we pray God for all who have that uh, spark of ingenuity about them, that they might turn waste into um, profit. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, <coughs> the fifth of which is our concern for the environment. Pope Francis' prayer includes thine touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Just occurred to me the rice double might be useful elsewhere um, in the ecosystem, but uh, above my pay grade, we pray that people understand all the consequences of their actions in uh, regard to that project. 
we pray um, in our cycle of prayer for our farming community, <coughs> and I generally extend it to the entire food web chain, that it may be healthy. We as consumers have a healthy relationship with our bodies, our environment, with our food, with uh, our retailers, that they will have a healthy relationship um, with their wholesalers, the wholesalers with the producers, and the producers with their environment, with themselves, with their family, with their land, with their stock and crops. And that all have enough space, margin, money, uh, that the land may rest, that we may not all work all hours God sends, that we all in each part of that process may be fulfilled and satisfied with our work that is regenerative and not destructive. And that we as consumers at the end will know enough about what's going on to have our say and make informed choices, not necessarily endeavouring to bring the price down on everything as much as possible so that bizarrely the most capital intensive, least environmental, most global processes end up providing the cheapest, less wholesome, least nutritious, dangerous food. <clears throat> but makes most money for those at the top of the pyramid. May God be merciful. We pray for um, Gray Miles, our rural chaplain, as he supports farmers uh, across Suffolk with his team. We pray you pray that for him. <coughs> and we also pray that you find ways of continuing his ministry uh, next year. Beyond. And uh, we pray this morning for our, uh, St Mary Chediston Ward and Joe, St Andrews Wissett, Jeffrey, special blessing on Nick, who has been warden, but his finding is difficult, will be stepping down. Uh, for St Peter's, Spexel, Keith, giving thanks to him stepping up and his energy, Vim and Verve. And for uh, Malcolm, who wears all the hats at St Margaret Linstead, but uh, with the help and support of those around him, um, seems to be able to cope with that for the time being. We pray to draw others in to the PCC <coughs> and to, into those roles. We pray the PCC will increasingly be open to that notion and concept that uh, the church there uh, might have a, an increasing active and influential future in that corner of the benefice. We've got uh, electoral roll names for Wissett. We'll include Claire, Edward, Henry, Margaret, or Maggie. Very special blessing on her and care home here, end of life care coming on. Anne and David, Jennifer, Valerie, also um, Pauli, special blessing on her. Diana, Susan, Helen, Eve, Hugh, Richard, Kathleen, Thomas, Anne, May they know your peace, your direction, your blessing, your uh, fruitfulness in all aspects and areas of their lives, especially as they engage with church and represent it. Pray too for the Beryls and Betty, Carolyn, Karen, Barbara, Melissa, Roxanne, Patricia, David, Janet, Elizabeth, Craig and Burke, Francis in Spexel, and in Linster, Janet, Sheila, Angela, Irene, Silly, Margaret, Derek, Pauline and Heather. <coughs> Extending our amen for other prayers uttered to all those named. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tahan Mohoshati Rimash Paramas Mohosha Sidika, Yer of Masma Ramashu has a pretty home as Ari Hamesh Bethany, Chakun Harabaka Tala and Yeramish, the Rohadi Rimas Firamash Bos and the Hukut Yaraka and Masa Miyadish. Chimunia di Hamas Masma Yadosh and Srokobadi and Sulata Prestatia to Santa Casamia Ashbahalo, Chenir Kamas Miahanos, Chakatime di Mahoshati and Harabahamia Sid, Mahas Milos to Sandy Hamashba. Chukusamiyan, <laughs> The collect for Easter, God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour towards us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.